Okay, I have no idea what happened. I'm so sorry, Streamlabs just crashed. And, ah, oh, this is so terrible. That's like the last true crime stream of this year and, oh man, it just fuck, fucked it up. Now it has to be in like two parts. Oh no, I will have to like re-upload it or something with like just combined. <laughs> that was so weird. That was so weird. I'm so sorry. Like suddenly the, the app Streamlabs just crashed and just showed me an error and that's it. I really hope it's not it's not gonna crash again because it's like definitely not the fault of my connection or anything. It's just like, yeah, the, the app just suddenly just crashed. That's it. Uh, by the way, I've, I've donated to Patreon. Oh my god, okay, thank you so much, Ian. Thank you so much for joining Patreon. Um, but I don't see any links or whatever. Where can I find it? Am I missing something? Um, you mean the links to to the videos? Um, I mean, you, you should get access to all the posts uh, that were there. Ian, please just read the posts. Yeah, yeah, so that's... Yeah, Ian, just, you know, just read the posts. There are There's like a list of posts. Um, okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let's get back to um, <laughs> It's a it's a Christmas course. It's a Christmas course, but part two now time for part two. Let's get back to the case Okay so Let me catch up on what happened in part one apparently because this is part two of the video so this unknown woman just wanders off to the cemetery in um, in the Pleasant Valley Memorial Park. And she basically sets up this whole, you know, the clear sheet, this whole area, her belongings on the ground. And then she wraps her head. Well, I mean, she puts on the headphones to listen to um, some like comedian's uh, skit. And then she just wraps a plastic bag around her head and tapes it and then lies down and dies and then as i said the next day on december 18th um at 8 a.m the groundskeeper found finds her body and then calls the police who showed uh, who show up 40 minutes later the detectives um upon investigating the scene and the, her belongings they find a string of personal items i mean that definitely belong to uh the jane, jane doe they also find a two envelopes in her pockets with a note uh from from jane doe that says that she prefers no autopsy and she also provides two fifty fifty dollar bills for the cremation of her body and then they also find strange um note with a poem that can that they can only assume was written by Jane Doe herself. And as for the clothing, there is a detailed description of what she was wearing. So, as I was saying, at the time of her death, um, Jane Doe was wearing a teal, all-weather Eddie Bauer hooded jacket, size M, a red sweater, size XL, a navy blue sweater, size L, a red sleeveless silk shirt size petite L and navy blue knit wool pants size L and all of those were the same brand the same brand and I'm not gonna pronounce it well but is the brand is called uh, Classique and Entier um, she was also wearing knee high stockings white bra uh, sorry white bra white fruit of the loom underpants size 6 and black and black loafers size 7M. So the police suspected that her clothing came from an, up, an upscale department store, um, Nordstorm, since Classique Entier is a Nordstorm brand. So first, the police did run her fingerprints, but there was no match. Of course, not everyone's fingerprints are on file, and not everyone, like not every missing person is actually reported to the police. Detective Richard Perez commented on this case. Quote, What makes it so frustrating, frustrating is this isn't a case where we're, we are dealing with skeletal remains. 
this is a lady that somebody should recognize. End quote. So days passed without results on Jane Doe's identity. And according to their standard procedure, the police and medical examiner have to try to develop an identity. That involves a full set of x-rays, full documentation on, of belongings, a finger and palm prints basically being taken, as well as dental records um, being taken and examined by a forensic od odontologist, I guess that's how we pronounce it, and a specialist in dental science, as well as sending a high-resolution photo of the prints to the FBI for closer examination. Even the Immigration and uh, natural, I guess, Naturalization Service is consulted if the person could potentially be uh, from a different country. So if the police um, have a suspicion that this person might not be a native um, to the country where, where they died, they just send all of those, all of the information that they have uh, to the service, to the immigration service, and they help um, determine where, whether or not this person was from outside of the country. So despite the note in which Jane Doe asked the coroner to forego autopsy to basically not do it at all, one was done regardless, to try to find out what happened to her, who she was, and how exactly did she die. The autopsy confirmed what the detectives at the scene suspected. She did drink brandy before her death, and her blood alcohol concentration was at 14 uh, sorry, 0.14 percent. Wow, if if it was 14 percent, um, yeah, she would be a bottle of strong alcohol herself. Well, I mean, maybe not that strong. Anyway, so as I said, her her BAC level was at 0.14 percent. The test also showed that uh, Jane Doe took Valium right before placing the plastic bag over her head. There was also an incision scar on her lower abdomen, suggesting that she it could be a scar from a C-section or another similar um, procedure. Now, even though, so, even though um, some pointed out that despite higher-end brand clothing, it could it could have been secondhand, uh, she could have been a drifter, but Detective Perez had a different opinion. Quote. If she's a drifter, she's the best kept drifter I've ever seen. End quote. Again, she appeared to be healthy and well dressed, had gold guest watch and um, that gold jaded ring that I talked about before. The place she chose to spend her last moments at at was um, the section of the cemetery where babies and children were buried, and that was called Babyland. She didn't lie down near any particular grave, though, so there wasn't any, like, immediate indication that she was there for a certain um, child that was buried there. Quote, This lady appears to have taken a thoughtful effort to leave us no clue as to who she is, and she's got it all plotted out. End quote. Words of Detective Perez, um, noting that Jane Doe didn't even have any receipt in, receipts in her pockets, which was unlike or unlikely for um, most suicides. Like usually, people don't think about these things. They just, if they if they are in under this kind of pressure, under this kind of stress, and they are about to end their life, they are not thinking about plotting. Um, for, you know, like, preventing the police to find out their identity. But she did. Like, she, this seemed like an elaborate plan to prevent the investigators, investigators and the coroner from ever finding out sh who she is. So this was a very calculated death. Oh, sorry. So one interesting item that stood out among the jewelry and high-end clothing in, in her possession was a pink Minnie Mouse-themed fanny pack. 
and it stood out because it was far from brand new. On the contrary, you could tell that the pack was very well worn and had even been mended with masking tape and safety pins. It seemed like, I don't know, this item was very precious to Jane Doe and it could be the main clue as to why she decided to end her life um, in the children's area of the cemetery. I was thinking, could it be, or the theories are that could it be, could this fanny pack be a memento of the child she's lost? Remember, like, she had that incision on her abdomen, which could potentially be a C-section, so maybe, you know, that means she had a child. Um, but obviously we don't know if this child was still alive, it was, you know, if they were stillborn, if they tragically died. Or if it was something else, it was completely something else. Just like the investigators still can't seem to find much about this woman, find you know, find out much about this woman, if you Google, Google the Annandale um, Jane Doe or the Fairfax Co County Jane Doe, um, or even the Christmas Tree Lady, you won't really find much. Most of the description, um, mostly the description I just gave you, so the circumstances of where she was found, the possible circumstances of her death, um, the cause of death, obviously, and the list of items, and maybe those, like, um, you know, photos that the, um, the investigators made or the, the police made, um, because they didn't want to, they did show the post-mortem uh, picture of her, but this one the digital kind of version of her is uh, showing much easier like how she might have looked before her death. So, however, internet does have some theories and I'll try my best to list out some of them. Um, wait, let me read some of the chat. Uh, Juniper, my first guest was stillborn or died very young, but the fanny pack makes me think at least three to five, right? Like, if the fanny pack was not... Because it doesn't seem like it was hers, what, in contrast with what she was wearing and, like, what items she had on her, those, like, that golden watch and the, the gold earrings and, and the ring, it was... It seemed like all those elegant things and high-end brands, but then you have... You've got this, like, fanny pack that's Minnie Mouse-themed and also, like, very patched up. And it seems like it would belong to a small toddler or just a small child. So who knows? Maybe... Also, this lady was in her, like, late 50s. It, it appears that she was in her late 50s to um, 70s. So if she had a child, like, it would have to... I, it's unlikely that she would have a small um, infant. I mean, it happens. Obviously, it happens to women in, in their 50s, but... You know, it's, it's less likely. Um, so, who knows? Maybe it was a bigger child. Maybe it was like a, a child that died later in their, in their life. Um, okay, Christopher, a little creepy. It, I mean, the, I have to say this case is just... To me, it's just sad. It's just so horribly sad how she died. Like, in that Christmas, that little Christmas tree right next to her, that was, that was just heartbreaking. And RJ, I feel like any sort of child death uh, would have multiple records of it mentioning the mother. That's true. But I will have, like, when I go to the theory, for the theories, you guys will see that there's something there that, you know, it makes sense. We still don't know who she is, even to this day, like, even now. But there are theories of pointing out to specific names. Um, and, um, wait, okay, let RJ, like, that seems like it might be kind of uh, newsworthy you know what i mean yeah that's true like if there was like a tragic death of a child but on the other hand not all deaths are tragic and like they end up on the news like if the child died just from illness in a hospital that's just normal everyday thing you know like people die every single day so it wouldn't make it into the news or anything uh I'm not the most familiar with the law, but don't doctors need to report a child death or something and the mom needs a record? Yes, but it's different with, let's say, children who... If it was an infant, let's say if it was an infant, it's different with children who are 
um, not claimed, like the, the child, the infant whose body is not claimed. Or like the parents just abandon them or the child is an orphan. It's, it's very different. Um, okay, I can blame um, the Christmas trees for the death. <laughs> the Christmas tree of the death. Uh, of the death. Um, RJ, unfortunately people die every day, including children. It's not newsworthy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, people die every day. Um, not every day, every death is reported in the news. And definitely not the one, um, I don't know, like, of... Well, some, I mean, there's a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of infants that just die. And, um, they are... Like the parents can't handle it or the parents just don't claim the body which i'm gonna talk about because this this actually happens um maybe it wasn't her child but maybe a grandchild she's taken care of possible possible like i'm gonna i'm gonna go through the theories right now and you guys will see and you guys can you know let me know what you think so as i said you know there are a couple of theories out there um on who she is who she might be or at least what might have happened to her that led to her just to her death to her deciding to end her life so first some theories from reddit um a user called mom 2-4 in the subreddit great grateful doe went deeper into what i also thought about and um said it here already so what if she had lost a child and if she was a drifter, perhaps she couldn't afford a gravestone, uh, resulting um, in the child being buried in an unmarked grave. Because it's not uncommon for the hospitals to cover the expenses of a burial if a child is stillborn and the parents, the parent or parents, uh, don't claim the body. And actually, this is this is very true because, like, my relative works um, in a hospital as a as a midwife and this actually happens like you know children are stillborn and the hospital usually if the body is not claimed the hospital just you know covers the expenses of burial but because this child was never named by the parents usually they just don't name it so the child is buried in an unmarked grave or you know it's only the the date of the death and that's it that's all the hospital has Sometimes they don't even have the, the information of the parents. Okay, so maybe she never knew where the child was buried in the first place and figured this would be the most likely place. As I said, if she was a drifter, maybe she didn't have, she couldn't afford to have the child. So she decided to give birth to it and then just, and then just, you know, like, um, leave the hospital or maybe she gave birth outside of the hospital and then the, the child was found and then you know as I said the hospital was the one to bury the child or you know cover the expenses so she wouldn't be she wouldn't know where the child was buried resulting in the you know like um oh sorry um also the Innova, I think Innova Fairfax Hospital is actually nearby um, that park and that cemetery. So uh, it would make sense for any unclaimed bodies to be buried in that cemetery. So grief had overtaken Jane Doe and she decided to pass away near her child. Like that, that seems like a likely scenario and everything was kind of pointing to that. You know, the C-section incision, um, that fanny pack, just... The, the location itself, that it's that particular section of the cemetery where babies and children are uh, buried. Or, uh, sorry, let me look at the chat real quick. Uh, Juniper, often, often cremated too, similar to her own wishes. That is true, yeah, like, um, either, either buried in... Because, like, the plot of land on a cemetery also costs money, so maybe there's... It's just cremation and... And some children are just not buried, it's just cre the, the body is cremated. Man, <laughs> YouTube is gonna so, uh, bad, like, just strike this video for me talking about the, you know, the death of children, of little children. But, oh well, I mean, this is, this is the part, integral part of this story, so I can't, I can't ju just really, like, 
forego it. Um, RJ, I can see the Christmas tree as just a way to celebrate the holiday season, but the suicide makes it seem to me like the kind of thing someone might do on the, the anniversary of a child's death. Yeah, you, you got it right. You got it right. Like, this is one of the theories. Like, basically, maybe, perhaps it was the anniversary of the child's death and you you actually hit the bull's eye because one of the other theories is but is about a lady a woman who lost a child exactly on um december 18th but um seven years prior so i'm gonna talk, talk about it in a second so a actually yeah so the more concrete theory with a name uh with a name was covered by uh, Theresa Ferguson in her art article on the Crime Theories podcast website. She found that if you google Jane Doe and the name of the cemetery where she was found at, there's a grave that comes up on Find a Grave website. And it's a grave of Brandy Ray Ballard. Or Ballard? I don't know how, how to pronounce it, but I, I'm just gonna go with Ballard. So Brandy died at nine years old seven years before the Christmas tree lady, exactly on December 18th, 1989, at a hospital. Apparently, Brandy had a few family members, her mother, Carmen Ballard, two sisters, one brother, and grandpa grandparents. However, the information does not mention anything about Brandy's father, whether or not he was still alive at the time, or even now. So, what if Carmen Ballard lost not only her child, but also her husband and just couldn't cope with grief? And she chose that same date, December 18th, seven years later, to end her own life. You know, on the anniversary of her own child's death. And then another theory from Reddit is that Jane Doe is actually Carmela Maria Gutierrez, a woman from Tennessee who went missing in January of 1990. Carmela would be 77 now, so 77 years old now, and in her 50s, at the time of her death, I think it would be 53 years old, which basically matches the approximate age of, of the Annandale uh, Jane Doe. Not only that, but Carmela also had undergone uh, had undergone a, um, I think it's called appendectomy and hysterectomy in the past. Hysterectomy is the removal of um, uterus, basically of you know re reproductive organ, um, in the past. So in the past, she did have um, those two procedures, and would that would explain the incision incision in her abdomen, and that it is slightly bigger than a normal c-section incision uh, because apparently that's what happened also like i saw i obviously i can't show um the picture here i'm not familiar with how like what's the procedure for a c-section exactly i just know um like my friends if they had a c-section it would be like the incision is horizontal um, I don't, maybe it, it varies from country to country, like maybe some of the incisions are um, vertical, but in Jane Doe's case, I think the incision was vertical, although, wait, was it? Let me just check one thing, Annandale, Jane Doe, because I'm, wait, okay, okay. Yeah, it seems like the incision in um, the, you know, Annandale Jane Doe was vertical, actually. So I don't, I'm not sure if that's, if that's actually normal for some countries, but at least in Poland, the incision is usually horizontal. So I'm not sure how it is for, for the C-section. So I'm not sure how it is in other countries. You guys can let me know if this is like normal uh, to have the C-section incision like vertically on your abdomen. Um, six year gap there, though. This is so unbe un unbelievably tragic. It is. It definitely is. Luke Ball, a bunch of murder. I mean, it is, you know, like not murder, maybe not murder, but in this case, it's 
it's most it wasn't it wasn't a murder c-section baby here it's pretty small and it can be a at a number of angles okay so it can be at a number of angles but um from what i see in the picture of her um like the post-mortem abdomen obviously i can't i'm not gonna show it here but the picture I see, it seems like the this incision is pretty big. It's actually pretty big, and I don't know if it's because it's stretched over time, or if this was how it was um, initially. It would make sense. No, actually, like it's it's quite weird, like that it's vertical, um, and it's so big. It's it's it seems like it's pretty big. So I'm not sure if this if this would be from a C-section. I mean, possible. Obviously, this is the most likely theory. If there are remains of the Ballard child, I presume they could test the DNA, the DNA against Jane Doe's. Unless they actually honored her wishes and crema cremated her. So, I was actually looking at Jane Doe's um, page on the, um, the Doe Network uh, website. And it seems like the DNA samples and just sample... It says, the report says that the samples were uh, submitted to testing, but the test results were never completed so i it's i suppose i suppose they didn't run the test they decided okay we are not gonna for some reason i d i didn't find the information i couldn't find the information like what exactly happened why um this shows that the tests were not completed maybe because they don't have enough evidence to obviously don't have enough strong evidence to suspect that uh, this woman is let's say carmen ballard to maybe like um, exhume brandy and test against that or or just um you know try to test dna test for with a family member of brandy's but it doesn't seem like the tests were completed ever so or at least i didn't find this information if you guys find this information yeah let me know like i want to i obviously want to know what happened there like what what tests exactly were run um on her Okay, so there is not only like the you know the the other theory about like Jane Doe being Carmela Maria Gutierrez. Um that you know, like as I said, Carmela disappeared in January of 1990, and she was 53 at the time. Or sorry, she was 53 at the time of um Jane Doe's Annandale's, uh, Annandale Jane Doe's death. But that would mean there's a six, uh, year window. So as, um, as someone here in the chat said, uh, said there is a six year window in her whereabouts. So she disappeared on 19, like in 1990 from, and then, and then she died in 1996. So obviously that's quite a long time. So it leaves the question, what happened to her during those six years like did she just leave did she have did she have no family no one was looking for her during those six years or maybe they just didn't find her or she didn't want to be found and she was just living under the radar and i have no idea but there's no not much information um there Okay, Juniper, 1996 DNA testing wasn't common and very few people would consent to having their child exhumed for the purpose. That is that is true. Like, as I said in, like, other um, cases, from definitely from, like, 1980s, 1990s, the DNA testing or forensic testing wasn't as thorough or wasn't didn't, didn't give you much options until, like, maybe 2000s, late 2000s. Um, and def yeah, like definitely, unless you have very, you know, strong evidence, very hard, ev like hard evidence, strong evidence that definitely points that this person might be um, the relative of uh, the deceased, you know, that uh, let's say she would be uh, Brandy's mother, unless there's a strong evidence, they won't, the family would not exhume. Like I personally, I would... I would also do the same, like I would not exhume my relative, my deceased relative, if the police just came to me and be like, hey, we might, maybe, like we don't have really any any evidence, but maybe she is the, you know, the, the missing link or the missing relative and we want to exhume 
basically exhume your loved one to test. Well, I mean, that's not that's not true. They could test against your DNA if there's any relation, but again, it was 1996. That might not even be an might not have been an option at the time. So I don't know. RJ, I don't know how unusual it is for a Jane Doe uh, suicide not to have sampled DNA, actually tested, but it seems like a weird way for this rabbit hole to just kind of stop. As I said, like, unless I just missed this information and there is more information out there about um, her test, like the DNA test or any samples being tested, but as I said, like, I just looked at the Jane, the Doe, the Doe network, and that's usually like a pretty good base for all the information about the case, like very just cold listed out information about um, the Doe cases. And it just said, yeah, like DNA samples or samples submitted, but tests not completed. So I guess that's, and that should be updated. Like this website is pretty good at updating things, like updating the, the articles. So I guess it wasn't there, but again, if you guys happen to find anything more, like, please do let me know. I wanna, I would like to know if there was anything else about this case. But so far, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we have. So these are the only um, theories and there isn't much evidence to support any of them just yet. But I do hope the, the police will not abandon the case um, and one day the identity of the Christmas tree lady or Annandale Jane Doe or Fairfax County Jane Doe will come to light. And this is actually the, um, you know, official, well, I mean, not official announcement, but like this is actually the, the graphics, the graphics that that's been circulating on the internet with all the, um, the, the details or like the base details of her um, of the deceased, of the Jane Doe, and of her death, the place where she died, and also their, her belongings. So maybe someone will recognize something uh, from those items, and maybe someone will recognize her. Obviously, there are also um, pictures post-mortem, but I'm not gonna... Uh, yeah, I can't show these. Like, I, I can't show those here. Uh, but there are pictures, like, of, of the actual person post-mortem, so you can actually see those on the internet. But that's it. That is it for this case. This is a short case that's not really a an elaborate murder case or, you know, that I, I usually talk about. But I thought that this case was... I don't know, I decided to end it this year with this case because it's just so unbearably sad. And I just want you guys to appreciate if you are happy this Christmas, if your Christmas is um, going to be, you know, warm, jolly, if it's gonna gonna be, you know, among your friends, family, just, you know, I would like you, I would like you to appreciate that, and and just, you know, if you have time, just remember about these people, like the Jane Doe's, John Doe's, that are out there, and they are still. Well, I mean, maybe their families are still looking for them. And they don't know that their loved one is already has already passed. But that's it for this case. And before we finish the stream, I just wanted to thank you, um, to say thank you to all of my patrons. Um, Tyrant Kitsune, Colonel Turtle, Zinc, Scholastica, CW, Esaubuen Rostro, Maria, Rudel Ganoodle, IDK Bacon 53, Jacob Ian, Holmes's, uh, sorry, Holmes's Apprentice, Juniper Clark, Nonan, Emmanuel Cadet, and apparently uh, Ian also joined, so thank you so much for joining to uh, Patreon, for subscribing to Patreon. Okay, let me switch to the chat room and uh, let's end this sad atmosphere, but this case was so heartbreaking. I am gonna think about it, um, you know, the entire Christmas, most likely. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today's case. Um, wait, let me just look at the chat real quick. Juniper, it's been 25 years, but resurgences in interest have solved cases with a longer gap than that. 
that is so true that's so true like so many cases there's been like longer as you said as you said there's been a longer gap and eventually they are actually solved um after like 30 years 50 years so who knows who knows like this I, that's why i decided to cover this case because i'm like okay there's not that much information it doesn't seem like the case is being pushed any further there are like theories circulating um around the internet but it's nothing official it's usually like yeah i found some theories on uh podcast websites or reddit posts or you know like something like that just very um just not official channels so definitely, you know, like I want to keep these cases, these kind of cases alive because who knows? Who knows who's going to look at this video? Who knows who's going to look at those articles or who's going to just come across this picture and be like, hey, I do, I do know this person or this seems familiar. You never know. So I just want to have it out there. You know, I want to keep it out there and I want to encourage you guys to do the same, you know, like to read about those cases to take a few minutes of your day to even read read like unsolved wikipedia or or the doe network but that's it this is the saddest case or saddest christmas uh, story i have ever ever heard about I've, I've ever read about and uh yeah but i didn't want to ruin your christmas i just wanted to remind you guys that there are people out there who might not be you know, not be hope even hoping for to see their loved one this Christmas. So appreciate, appreciate it if you have your loved ones around, and appreciate every single year that you're together. Okay, so uh, let me see, <laughs> let me see the chat. RJ, yeah, this is the kind of case that's gonna do a number on you uh, once you get into it, get into it and hear about all these details. That is true. I'm. I, when I was researching it, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> every every next kind of detail, like as I was reading into it, I was like, oh god, my now I'm now I'm kind of feeling guilty for having like happy Christmas. But, you know, I, I figured, OK, at least this is, you know, this is the least I can do. The least I can do is put it out there. And um, yes, yeah, Scholastica, this case is like those commercials with sad homeless puppies they always show near Christmas time. <laughs> okay, this was not my, this was not exactly my intention, but I can see, yeah, I can see that. I can see, oh god, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a commercial. I'm a sad, pu sad puppy commercial. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good to, you know, it's good to remember, even though it's sad, even though it is pretty heartbreaking to hear about this, especially when you're trying to have a good time on Christmas. It's good to remember those things and good to, you know, sometimes do the good deed. I guess I could, I guess you could call it that a good deed and just put the case out there that that might be soon forgotten to just prevent it, you know, prevent it from being forgotten. The videos were awesome. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, the videos because today's stream is in two parts. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy New Year. And I hope you have a swell time. I hope you have a great time. Uh, despite me being a bummer and despite me just like kind of, uh, you know, painting a very sad Christmas atmosphere today. Uh, but I hope you guys will have a great time. Sona spreading the little uh, matchstick girl Christmas energy. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember that story. I remember that story. It was terrible. It was the, that's that's one of the saddest stories of my childhood too and she died at the end god damn what how is it how is that a children's story i'm sad i'm a sad puppy commercial please clip that <laughs> I, apparently i am i'm a sad puppy commercial <laughs> hopefully she finally gets peace can't imagine what went through her mind when this happened i i know right like uh basic veto you are very right like i also i was reading this story and when i read that she actually put on headphones and played some like comedians uh, skit or comedians routine I, I don't know i don't know why but it was just so unbearably sad like you you would think that okay she is about to end her life she want she's gonna like I, I mean you don't know what thoughts are running through her head but then it just kind of seemed with that one detail it kind of seemed like oh maybe she actually wanted to listen to something you know something that sounds 
funny, happy, some... Like, maybe she wanted that one last um, drop of happiness. Like, maybe she wanted to... I don't know, like... It's just so sad that she was she was listening listening to comedians and it seemed like she had more cassettes in her backpack, right? Like, she had Monty Python and... Damn, like, that's just so, so, so sad. Sona Claus, you are not a bummer. Ah, thank you, DJ. And, uh, Trevor, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope you have a, a splendid time this Christmas and New Year's. Okay, so listening to her favorite things, right? Yeah, like, that That was the impression. It was like, oh, maybe she was listening to this was her favorite cassette or these were her favorite comedians. Maybe she just wanted that one last thrill. I don't know. I have no idea, but it just made me so sad. Okay, so that's it. Again, I'm so sorry for this stream kind of cutting off midway and, and just we had to, like, split it into two two streams. I'm gonna change the thumbnail and it's gonna, it's gonna be like part one, part two. Um, Laciel, I just real I just realized I haven't been watching the live part uh, the entire time. I was nine minutes behind. What? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you, uh, you know, <laughs> you ended up watching like nine minutes behind. People who go to this effort to attempt suicide are usually the ones who want to end on a high note or on a meaningful date. Yeah, I got I got that feeling too, you know, like especially with the yeah, like the place, the place, the items, the little Christmas tree and yeah, like those notes like, oh, please do not, you know, prefer no autopsy and, you know, very calculated, very like, very planned, very intentional in what she was doing and what how she wanted to be found. Also, mind you, that clear plastic sheet that she spread on the ground. It seemed like she was also thoughtful of the people. Like, that's even sadder. Man, that's so sad. So it seems like she was very thoughtful also of the people who might find her. So she spread that plastic sheet to maybe... Like, investigators were speculating that maybe she didn't want to make a mess because she didn't want... She didn't know when her body is gonna be found. So, you know, as the body decomposes, there are fluids, um, you know, oozing out they are there are, there are things happening uh, to the body obviously so she also spread that like plastic kind of cover to not make a mess which is like on one hand it's just like oh my god lady why like she yeah like she didn't want to leave a mess exactly she didn't want to want to leave a mess and it's just so sad because not only she she was like, okay, I don't want to be a bother to anyone. I just want to die peacefully here. And whoever finds me, at least, you know, I'm gonna... I'm gonna make it easier for them. I'll just... I won't, I won't like, make a mess in the cemetery where, where babies are um, buried. When, where children are buried. Oh, man, that, made, that made, made it so much sadder. I can feel my Christmas cheer decreasing. I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sad puppy commercial again. Merry Christmas and hope you have a happy New Year, Sona, Sona Claus, and go Poland. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, happy holidays to everyone. Okay, before we finish, um, again, from today uh, up until the New Year, so up until January 1st, uh, I will be taking a Christmas break. So you will not hear from me the next week. Um... Yeah, there's not gonna be a case, a true crime case on YouTube next week. But if you miss me, if you miss my voice, and if you miss my terrible jokes and uh, just, you know, streams crashing, you can still get access to Patreon. And there you will get access to uh, at least six um, previous videos. So previous bonus true crime cases on Patreon only. So that's not gonna... You, you won't find it on YouTube. It's only on Patreon. So if you miss me, you can just go to Patreon and, uh, you know, hear hear me uh, talking about uh, some more angry mob because there was recently a case that I discussed uh, of an angry mob um, killing someone as well. So uh, that was fun. I got super angry. Uh, my patron patrons can attest. I was uh, basically growling into the microphone and I was <laughs> grunting, growling and uh, just being all, all sorts of frustrated and pissed and I just got so pissed during like midstream <laughs> they can attest 
Um, so yeah, there's a couple of those cases that I've covered on Patreon. And not only that, if you join Patreon now, you still have a chance to join my Christmas call uh, on December 26th. Uh, and that's going to be on my Discord server. So if you join now, you can still join our party. You can still talk to me, you know, hang out with me. We can chat. We can uh, play games. We're going to play games. So we might watch a movie. And we're just going to have a good time right before, you know, like to end this year on a high note and welcome the new year. <laughs> Angry Mob returns. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, D Bacon Bacon can tell you. Bacon t can tell you. I was like so angry. Scholastica, Bacon, you guys can tell them how angry I was during that st stream. And I was just like, I did not hold back uh, when it comes to words, when it comes to, uh, you know, swear words. <laughs> I was I was throwing it out there. Okay, so that's about it. <laughs> she growls. I'd say that's metal, but that's Sona hitting her Polish heritage. <laughs> that is that is so true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, it sounds it sounds about right. Ken Rex, yep, Ken Rex, exactly. I got so pissed at that case. Like when I was reading about this, oh my god, oh my god, I'm I'm getting angry right now. Like I'm getting thinking about it, thinking about this person, and what he did, and what he did to several women. I'm like. And not, not what you think, you know, like even, it's not even like your simple, okay, well, not simple, but like, it's not even like your regular, let's say, oh, he was an, a, a sex offender. He was, but uh, it was, ah, uh, he was just evil. He was just evil. Okay. Pure anger. That's it. A group of uh, rhinoceroses in, is a crash. A group of ravens is a murder. A group of yearlings is a mob. <laughs> Oh my god, oh I'm I'm loving this. Yes, feelings are um uh, we can we can just stick to it, you know? Like you guys are feelings, but you guys are also uh my my angry mob. <laughs> you know, there's my little pony and there's also my angry mob. Fearsona edition. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for being here tonight. Or yeah, today, for some of you. Uh yeah, that's that's it. That's the last stream of this year. Happy holidays. You know, have a happy new year. Um, have a splendid end of the year. I hope you guys will, you know, spend the, the end of the year um, and Christmas the way you want to around people you love. And, uh, you know, you will, you know, just have that cozy, warm Christmas atmosphere. And please don't drink too much on New Year's. Uh, hangover is no fun. And I'll try not to do that either. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. Uh, and happy holidays. Remember to lock your doors. Until the next time. And farewell, feelings. Bye.